Okay, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about uh, incorporating manure into wheat. For many, many years, we've done a lot of work with uh, manure on wheat, manure in corn, uh, things like that. We got a grant to play with this idea from the Ohio Small Grains Council. Really appreciate their help. In 2015, when you know, literally the poop hit the fan, this is a picture of my um, television screen. And I wake up at 6.15 on a Saturday morning and we have Toledo with their water crisis. So it's always a memorable thing. I use that slide once in a while, uh, mycocysteine issues that we ran into. And we've got a lot of producers, partly due to the price of nitrogen, partly due to the opportunity to use their manure better, who have done a lot of manure application like this. Uh, simply taking their manure tankers across wheat fields in the spring, this works really, really well, as long as they observe the proper setback distances, uh, we get good results with yields. Mo all of us would agree, we'd rather not run a heavy manure tanker across our fields in the spring, especially the clay content that we have in our fields, but not everybody can have everything they want. This is a commercial manure applicator doing the very same thing. He's using sow manure, where the previous person was doing 3,500 gallons a minute. This person's doing about 10,000 Gallon, excuse me, 3,500 gallons per acre. This person's doing about 10,000 gallons per acre, but sow manure is much lower nutrient density than uh, swine finishing manure. And this producer knew exactly how many pounds of nitrogen he was getting on his wheat crop. It yielded 120 bushels per acre last year. So he is sold for life if he can get manure on wheat at the appropriate time. What we wanted to do is we wanted to look at the possibility of incorporation into wheat. We've done a little bit with that about 10 years ago but we had a producer locally that bought a grassland applicator. And this is simply a used piece of equipment. It's 20 feet wide. And the grassland applicator just has a narrow bevel that opens up a slice in the soil. And then it's got a boot on the back that puts that into the, puts the manure over directly over top that slice. And then uh, it's got a depth control wheel here, about two and a half, two and three quarter inches of depth. Although the newer ones don't have that similar depth control. And then lastly, when you pick it up on the ends to make a turn, it has to actually pinches that uh, rubber pipe so that uh, it shuts off manure when you make your turns, keeps the field much cleaner. So what we did is we had um, three producers interested in doing this. Uh, we're pulling manure off manure tankers and we're going across the field. Now we had a 7,300 gallon noon tanker. We've got a um, 20 foot grassland applicator and we've got three axles underneath the uh, manure tanker. This first field is an organic field. The thing I would like to point out is there's no manure visible on the surface of this field as you go across. Even at the 4,000 gallons per acre rate, you get 100 units of nitrogen. When you looked at it later, you can see the tracks from the tanker. That's something we don't really like to see, but that's what you have to put up with in this situation. Or if we could use the drag hose, we probably would have been a little better off. But this is basically what the field looks like when you slice it up. It, it really, uh, you would think we would do more damage than we do. And the wheat seems to recover nicely from it. This is what the field looked like just a few weeks later. Pretty happy about that. And then when you look down in between those uh, rows of wheat, you can see the slices. And uh, that's where the manure went into the ground. An ODA came out and watched us do this in, in one of our fields. And then when we look at the surface app, or when we look at the aerial view of that, what we can see is that where the manure tanker tracks are are the light strips and where the, where the manure tanker didn't hit are the darker strips. So the wheat likes what we're doing as long as we, we don't beat the tar out of it in the process. I will say that on the end rows where we had to pull off these manure tankers, we beat that crap out of the field. We really did. Again, you brought that same heavy manure tanker, heavy thing to the same spot in the field to load each time. So you just need to accept that manure tankers on wheat are not the greatest idea we've come up with. But we were looking for the research results. That's really what we're after. We know once we, you know, we've got plans to get wider equipment and plans to go to drag hoses, but you start someplace. This is a field that we hit late. And we could not get the commercial applicator reined in from some of his other fields to do our plot. So he went through and he uh, essentially got on this wheat right about the feeks growth stage six, which is when the first node is visible when it's starting the elongation process. 
And when you smash it at that point, it's not as forgiving as when you smash it when it's a green up or lower. So uh, we did, we came in here, I did the math. We ran over 40% of this wheat field when you figure the tractor tires, when you figure the tanker tires. And that's what it looked like right after we got done. You know, the wheat was fairly tall. We weren't very proud of it. It was right by a highway. The farmer wasn't very happy about it. Uh, but I'd worked with him before. And I knew he'd get over it eventually. It didn't rain for about three weeks. And it really, those, those tanker tracks looked like crap. And I stopped visiting the field when I knew he was home because I didn't want him catching me out there. They began to come back, but you could still see them even as the wheat progressed. Even as it began to head out, began to ripen, you could still see those tracks. And the wheat was behind on those tracks. And then when you actually shelled out a few heads, you found out that where the, tra where the tractor ran over it, it didn't really mine very much, but where the tanker hit it, the wheat heads were quite a bit smaller. So you need to accept you're going to take a yield, a yield hit in those small areas. At harvest time, we ran with him on the combine. Uh, farmers always like that when you ride in their combine. You know, they'll remember that. They may not remember everything else about the field, but they'll remember you being their friend during harvest time. So we shoot, shoot a lot of drone videos. But basically, what we did is we wanted to look at the yield data. And in the first field we did, the very first video we saw, that was an organic field. And we hit it early, and he ended up with 93.2 bushels from the incorporated manure and 95.4 on the surface applied. And that's what we expected. We thought the surface applied manure would out yield the incorporated, primarily because we're not slicing up, you know, 20 feet of, of uh, wheat with each strip. On the second field that we did, uh, that was the one that we hit late. That was the one that I was embarrassed to show you the pictures of. We ended up with 102 bushels per acre on the manure versus 98, 97, 96.9 on the UAN. Uh, that looks impressive, and it is impressive, but we took drone pictures, and the people that put the 28 on didn't do a very good job either. So, But the farmer was very satisfied with this. Uh, personally, I think the field was good enough. It probably should have done 120 bushel if we could have used the drag hose instead of what we did. And then on the third one, the, the, uh, another organic field we hit, uh, basically they were essentially about the same, uh, a little bit better on the surface applied than the incorporated. Really what we wanted to do is try this out. Now the other positive about this type of research, ODA was impressed enough with the uh, lack of manure visible on the surface, but they agreed that they would put this in one of their H2O programs. So farmers could get $60 an acre to incorporate manure on wheat now. So if you figure you're gonna get the payment, you figure that you're gonna get every bit of the wheat you could have got before. And if we can get it to where we're doing it with a uh, drag hose, we think it's gonna be a no brainer. It's probably something that's really gonna catch on and stick. So the surface application was great. Don't get me wrong. We do a lot of drag hosing of wheat, and, and, but still it's not the same as incorporation. You know, we've got to get away from putting all of our nutrients on the surface and building up that top uh, layer, an inch of soil or so with so many nutrients. We're getting our, our P205 levels are getting, in the old days when we plowed, those P205 levels would be even from top to the, to the first seven inches of the soil. That's not true anymore. They're much higher in the upper couple inches. Essentially, that's what we did. I'd be happy to take questions from anybody who's got them. Yes. Yeah, or if we got on the field two weeks earlier when we, when we thought we should have had it. We had a wonderful year in 2021 to get on these wheat fields. We did not this year. Um, when we set this conference up, I said, well, ah, we'll be done with the wheat loss by now. They're doing them today. They're, uh, and, and that's the neat thing about if you do this work and you work with organic farmers, they're not going to bail on you. They're not going to go to commercial fertilizer. They're going to stick it out. And uh, so, yeah, we've got um, two of them are going to get done this very week. So uh, I texted with both of them and, and uh, feeling really good about it.